from family working together from apart, is a prog trauma program director and chief of the division of trauma surgery, is a trauma and general surgeon and an intensivist of the McGill University Health Center in Montreal, Canada. Please welcome Dr. Tarek Razek. And to give his reaction to the said topic, is the chair of the second Congress of the ZAN Collaboration of Trauma and the chief of trauma and critical care unit, Department of Surgery of the Faculty of Medicine, Chiang Mai University in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Well, though, please welcome Dr. Narain Chotiros, Chotiros Niramit. Dr. Peck, you may take it away. Thank you. Thank you so very much for the introduction. Uh, it's extremely uh, uh, a tremendous privilege for me to be here with everyone and to be invited to speak with this with this group and to all of you present today. Um, and I I simply um, adore the topic of from mind to hearts. And I think my talk will follow along the flow of the previous presentations very very nicely, and especially uh, Dr. Elman Stein's presentation. And and I think it uh, continue to amplify the concept of uh, going from mind to heart. And, and I think you'll see um, what I mean by this as we go through this, as we speak about how we continue to grow and mature uh, the global trauma family and all of us who work professionally in providing emergency services and specifically advanced trauma care in our communities to enhance the safety uh, for our populations and provide higher, higher and higher degrees of professionally excellent care, which is a significant struggle uh, for, for all of us in our communities and for some more than others. Um, and, and I think it's, it's tremendous to build this family working together in this difficult context to learn how to do it better and to enjoy the company that we keep with each other in our professional family. So I'll, I'll go I'll have a quick overview here of how I think we've been able to achieve some of the wonderful um, both cognitive, intellectual, academic engagements that have continued to enhance our ability to do this work better and better as a global family, uh, but also what it means in our hearts uh, to work together in this way and to build this uh, professional family that, that I think I feel very strongly uh, that we have and will continue to do. And that I think it's interesting to reflect on some of the challenges we face in doing so, both the academic, uh, clinical, and research aspects of what we try to do better and better, but also the, the difficulties and some of the challenges we face to do this, um, to build the family together and to work more collaboratively and to try to expose some of these challenges. And I think as a community all together, to try to find ways to work together to enhance our ability to do this more easily. So I'm going to speak a little bit about the teaching and training, as many of the previous speakers have, in terms of fellowships and exchanges and the shared courses, the STC and several others. Um, uh, academics and research in terms of how can we take that building of a family, but use it to grow and enhance our combined and shared knowledge and move forward in a direction of improving what we do and learning together how to do this. And then take all of that, but do as much as we can to share it together so that we can apply it as a team of, of professionals, um, specifically many surgeons, but all healthcare professionals who are working in the domain of emergency services and advanced trauma care, um, to, to apply this to governance, to health policy, to health ministry, to financial and administrative support for this work, which I find is an area where there is substantive room for improvement in how we are able to translate this into the impact um, that we would like to see more and more in our healthcare system design. So I'll speak first about the education aspect of this and just how valuable this is for all of us who have been fortunate enough to share and exchange and learn from other leaders in our communities, uh, in our healthcare environment on how to do the work we do better. I was extraordinarily fortunate to go from Canada to the United States to do my trauma fellowship uh, and intensive care medicine fellowship um, with a team in Philadelphia. And that just, quite frankly, really changed my life. It, it changed my personal life in terms of the friendships I made there. And it changed my professional life very dramatically, learning from a group of mentors who had a profound 
impact on, on me personally and professionally and continue to do so and to continue to maintain those relationships. And one of the greatest privileges that I have been able to have personally and professionally in my role now as a trauma director in my own academic center um, is to have been able to grow a fellowship where I'm able to do that with others together um, with our fellowship trainees. Uh, and that has been just one of the most greatest sources of joy. And speaking of going from mind to heart, this is a translation of knowledge and an exchange of knowledge. And as, as, as many of the previous speakers, and I reflect on the words of Elman Stein as well, and you know, how, how incredibly valuable it is to have this exchange and how it's very much a two-way exchange. We all learn, uh, I think, dramatically from our trainees, especially higher level trainees. And it has a tremendous impact on this, this mentorship, mentor-mentee relationship is very profound. And, and we've been extraordinarily privileged here in our program in Montreal at McGill to have had fellows come to train with trauma surgery with us in our program here from Singapore, from Thailand, from Japan, and from Malaysia. And uh, although these are, you know, very intense fellowship trainings, and I think very valuable professionally uh, to enhance skills and to learn how the trauma system, trauma team from the individuals in the hospital at a trauma center that's functioning reasonably well, uh, and, and how this interfaces with a regional trauma system that's functioning reasonably well in a regional geographic basin to provide enhanced care to a community. But it's also about establishing relationships. And this is one snapshot of a small part of our trauma program and our, our trauma team with several attendings and one and several of our fellows. Um, and it's just, I think you can see um, uh, pre COVID times, how much we are able to enjoy our company and exchange things with each other, not our, well, go far, far beyond um, the work and go well into the personal uh, and in, into the, into our, or into our social and private lives that are, I think, very profound impacts on all of us for the rest of our lives and, and beyond actually in our families, as our families get to know each other. And as we exchange culturally across cultures and across he healthcare systems, such a profound exchange of knowledge that, I, that the value of this, I think is just almost beyond um, my own understanding of just how profound an impact this is on me personally at this phase in my career, even, reflecting on how much this impacts me. And this is one of our uh, graduation ceremonies. A couple of our trauma fellows, um, from one from Malaysia, one from Egypt, and, and the cross-cultural connections that are happening between them and us, but between our fellows as well when they're here together is just in incredibly dramatic and, and, a, and, a, and just a tremendously enjoyable experience. Um, and, and of course, also, there's also the, the, the family exchange, spending time at our in our homes and exchanging between our families is, is just a, a profound experience and, and one I would just uh, strongly encourage that we find ways to do more and more of this. Um, here's a photo of one of our fellows originally from Singapore from is LT, many of you know, and Karen Go, who works in their program in, in Singapore, Tan Tok Seng, and it's just, uh, just, just been a, a fabulous experience. But sadly, I, I think there still remain many obstructions to these fellowship exchanges that are, that are, that are significant and impede our ability to enhance uh, equity and access to these kinds of training opportunities. And they are financial hurdles, administrative hurdles, the availability of fellowship spots for foreign graduates and many of our programs throughout the world, um, visa and immigration obstructions, uh, licensing obstructions to do this. And I think there's a, there's a very although many of us work very hard across the world to um, power through and struggle, uh, my analogy is to swim like salmon who will go upstream to spawn. We are often swimming upstream against a current to achieve the ability to run these programs. Um, many of us all over the world do this and engage in this struggle, but I think there's a lot of room for advocacy from all of us together in our broad family and our academic and professional societies um, to advocate for enhancing the ability for these to happen, both in, in, in financial support from a global perspective, where I think we can do far better than we do at sharing resources around the world to provide increased equitable access to this kind of training opportunity, which is so valuable, um, and to enhance the, and the, the, the ease of ability to administratively ob obtain access to, to engage in various forms of clinical exchange programs around the world. Um, there are many other options to do them in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an easier structural fashion, which again can be still uh, face many obstructions and I think could be enhanced. And I think there's a lot of work that we can do together as a, as a family uh, of professionals doing this to, to enhance the capacity for us to do these with, with greater ease. 
And then there's the shared courses that many people have already spoken about, which I think has been also one of the most powerful learning experience I have had post fellowship. It's an ongoing learning experience for me that is just almost unbelievable in terms of the knowledge exchange that happens when one participates in these courses. And I'm speaking as an instructor, I have the tremendous privilege of being the head of DSTC uh, these past few years for IATSIC. And, the, and, and my previous experiences with de- participating in DSTC courses, both going way back as a student and, and also now as an instructor and director, um, an unbelievable exchange of information, my ability to understand the global scene of how emergency services and trauma care functions and works at the ground level in the real world um, in speaking to practitioners in 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 a wide variety of environments around the world and really learn firsthand how things function um, is powerful knowledge to get gather a large set of information about how the world works and where we need to then look at targeting enhancements in education enhancements and opportunities to improve healthcare system design and delivery um, where we can apply lessons learned in different parts of the world and with leadership from all over the world together working to understand how to contextualize and adapt what has been learned in one area of the world to apply it successfully with adaptations to contextually make it functional in different parts of the world. And I think there's an awful lot of work that can be done to continue to improve that um, in so many areas in the world. There's a, there's a very exciting, uh, limitless, but challenging amount of work that remains to be done to enhance how we deliver trauma services in, in almost every corner of the globe. Um, and, and just, you know, the, the ability to run these courses, as Dr. Stein also pointed out, is just amazing. And the, the sharing of experiences across a wide array of, of, of the planet is, is dramatic. But there's a lot of, again, obstructions to doing this, even though we do quite a lot of it. And when it's done, it's fabulous. There's a lot of obstructions to getting this done in many other parts of the world to increase the, again, equity of access to this knowledge transfer in these shared courses. And it's expensive. It requires a strong cohort of experienced instructors, which, which takes time to develop, and the infrastructure in place, the logistics to run these programs. Um, and as has been mentioned before, there are many of these programs, and they all des- deserve, when they are well-designed, tremendous support from our professional societies and our academic institutions for all of us as a family really need to start doing, I think, even more than we do to support the dissemination and enhanced equity of access for many of these courses in the National Trauma Management course in Sweden with the Sri Lankan leadership. That's really been very incredible. And of course, ATLS. And, the, and again, the family that this builds is powerful and the exchange of knowledge is powerful. I, I really can't overstate how, how powerful this is. Um, and and on, on every level, on the, on the knowledge transfer and exchange, but I'll get on the social level and the building of that family, that, that mind to heart construct is, is just incredible. Um, and, and the mentors you, you find along the way that, that guide you and, and, and open doors and, and, and you, that allow you to explore things is, again, also extremely powerful and a really joyous experience. But there are challenges. Difficult to obtain permissions to access some of these courses, the permission to run the programs. I think we can do a lot to facilitate that process. There has to be a process. It has to be a rigorous process. But it can be, I think, significantly enhanced in, in, in how we facilitate that process. The financing issues, the infrastructure required, and the time allocation to, to be able to do these things. There are a lot of challenges. I, I think it's extremely important that as a community of passionate healthcare providers, that we work very hard to explore innovative ways to expand access to these high quality training opportunities, both fellowships and other exchange direct programs and shared courses improving accessibility, being very flexible and innovative in course design to accommodate limited financing in different contexts, Aggressive, aggressively soliciting financing from a global perspective where I think we can make tremendous uh, steps where we have a lot of work left to do for financing all of these initiatives and, and share more equitably the global resources to have more equitable access to the training opportunities and the exchange of information. Uh, to allow us to begin to address this. And there's the academics. Take it to another level. I think we also need to look at doing very formal exchanges more rigorously and more routinely in enhancing access to master's and PhD trainings. So we're very fortunate here in our institution to have worked very hard to create these that are open to international students. 
um, for master's programs and PhD programs, having created a program in experimental surgery with a concentration in global surgery. So to take a cohort of clinicians and train them in the rigorous process of doing academic research work in examining how can we improve surgical healthcare system design, emergency, emergency care assist health system design. I think this is a really critical thing that we can do a lot more on. When we currently have one of our current PhD students is from Japan right now who's completed his trauma clinical fellowship with us and is extended to do his PhD with us, which is really fantastic. Having received a grant from a philanthropic donor in our community here who is eager to support and sustain this program. So yeah, I think that this is really, really important, very critical for clinicians to engage in this type of rigorous process so we can have a direct engagement in policy making so that we can translate this into system policy. And I think this is another step we need to continue to advocate for as we mature this family, as we mature how we do this exchange of knowledge and information transfer. I think we need to also look at doing it in a very rigorous academic fashion to do this in a formal way that is supported and sustained. And to, to that end, we have uh, engaged at our institution to create a center for global surgery, which is focused on developing the academic careers of our own surgical faculty here, um, but also all those who we are lucky enough to have come and join us from a global community to participate in these programs, whether they're in the clinical programs, our shared courses, or in our academic master's and PhD programs. And we've been extraordinarily lucky to work in this capacity with teams from Sri Lanka, from Thailand, from Nepal, in a wide variety of environments, and, quite, and really throughout the world as well. And that, that's our website if you're interested to get more information on this. I think it's a fabulous construct. We have a lot of growth we still need to do, uh, but I think it holds a lot of promise for the future. And I think what this all culminates into for me is an a, a, a innovative attempt to try to consistently generate very, very strong leadership, opening doors for others to move, through, sharing resources, in, enhancing equitable access to what we all understand as being incredibly valuable for those of us who've been fortunate enough to have been able to dip our toes into this world and have participated both at a student level and as a mentor uh, faculty level, uh, the, the, the improvement that has had in my own personal life and my professional life is beyond compare. So it's so important for me to make sure those doors remain open and we open them wider and wider and wider. And, and, and it's leadership by example, developing young talent, advancing knowledge and focusing on the highest quality in patient care and the practice of the craft of surgery and having a direct impact on health policy and system design so that we can do this better going forward consistently over time and engage very rigorously in that process. Um, so I look forward to the future. I think there's a lot of work to do that is extraordinarily fun uh, to do together. And, and I, I really just can't emphasize how much I look forward to being able to work together with all of you uh, in this pursuit uh, of excellence in this area of work. And I thank you so much for your time. First of all, I would like to say thank you for Tarek for your excellent talk. And the, in my opinion, I agree with you for the uh, fellowship training travel around and look the different style of treatment. Before I give the, the a little comment and sharing something that happened in, in my country, uh, I would like to show this picture. This is the beginning of my experience to join to this uh, ACT team. Because of in 2011, I was invited to Singapore for joining my experience of treat, uh, train, uh, uh, treatment of the trauma cases. Since then, I have opportunity to join the Asian Trump meeting in 2012. Because among, among these friends, old friends, 10 years ago, they brought me here and to join this uh, ACT team until we have the webinar. In 2012, we have an uh, enjoyable party that night and we agreed to have the ACT team. Also, Vijayan was there at that time and enjoyable party very much. And also, thank you for Ted Herbosa, T.O. who invited me and also Chumita who was there, Rasman, um, uh, Ismail, and so many people in the Philippines. And that night, this is the historical pictures of people who stayed that night and we agreed to have the Asian collaboration for trauma. 
And after that, we do have the second meeting in Thailand, the third meeting in Johor, fourth meeting in Singapore. And now we move to Philippines uh, again to, to have this uh, meeting and we move to be the Act webinar, which grow up and have so many participants this time. Because of this, we grow up and we make community like this. Back to the talk of the Professor Tarek about the fellowship, I do agree that there are some obstacles, but I would like to say thank you very much, very, very much for Professor Tarek to accept Asian people to stay with him in MacU University. In MacU, not even just surgery, not even just trauma, he accepts so many fellowships, even my emergency medicine doctor who go there and is still uh, uh, training there, uh, trained there for the being the emergency uh, physicians. And also in this year, we're going to have a Thai surgeon who travel there also. Even we have so many financial uh, obstacles and also the license for practice uh, with some rooms or small space or tunnel, we can make the fellowship and travel to, to uh, uh, Canada, to MACU to help. And also in Thailand, we're trying to accept also because our friends all over the world help us well, who live in Asia. So in Thailand, we also accept the fellow, but it's very difficult to get a license. You can get the, just the certificate, but not, not the license to, to do the surgery and not the diploma. Anyway, we're trying our best. And we also accept some Nepal doctor, my Myanmar doctor, Laos, and some probably, probably we're gonna have Singaporean come next time. Next time. For the training course, the ATOS, the STC, PSOS asset. It's one kind of course that Dr. Tarek also mentioned about that. In Thailand, this is the biggest network of the training course that make the trauma people who take care of trauma come together. The ATOS come to the 10th edition. This is the first picture of the ATOS 2003 in Thailand. Now we grow up to be a, a bigger group and we have more than 100 instructors and more than uh, 40 courses a year all over the country to serve the surgeon and also the physicians. And so we have friends, a lot of friends all over the world and have a lot of meeting and make friends, network from our mind to heart. So we help each other. We have so many kind of uh, uh, instructor, uh, educator all over the country and come together even in the, in the, in the States. Also, we have to, a, a group of the team of friends for Australia, Malaysia, the States, and Thailand, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, go to uh, uh, for, uh, perform the first course in Malaysia, also in Myanmar, 2014, Mongolia. And also the STC in Thailand, thank you very much for Ian Sebel, who, who is the friends of my senior doctor, General Nopodo, and invited me to be the first four surgeon who study in the STC. This is the network. So after that, we have uh, the STC in Thailand. The first course, uh, I also the instructor at that time. And also, we have friends in Singapore invited us from Thailand, about three or four instructors uh, to uh, join and sharing the experience also in the Philippines. This is among friends because of, we have friends and we know each other, especially VJ who uh, always invited me, and also Chumita, also Tio, and many, many, many friends from Philippines also. And this is Thailand. Ian Seville was here, uh, Scott DeMore was here, and Professor Bofas was here because we are friends also. And also in Philippines many times, and Singapore also. And because of, also in, in Sydney, because of the Scott DeMore is our friend. And we expand the network, and we all in Asian countries like like us can travel and also join our experience of trauma care in uh, our region so, so. But because of the DSTC, the cost is quite high. So now we move, thank you for the Singapore team who make the DSTC. I think it's the cost gonna be cheaper because the new normal and reduce the cost by using the online discussion by the international faculties and also use the local faculty for workshop. And also I heard that Professor Tarek would like to change something in the STC to suit 
applicable for each region. Hopefully, we're going to have in futures. Also, among this friend, thank you, Singapore team, to help Thailand to have the PHTLS course. And also, because of we are cl very close friend. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, uh, uh, Wei Xiong. Uh, thank you, Theo, and friends uh, uh, from uh, the States and friends from Singapore who help PHTOS to exist in Thailand, and now we have it. Also, the same as the asset cost, we have friends from the, uh, uh, the American College of Surgeons and help us to have the asset for the cadaveric workshop. And also, we expand our job to our friends from Afghanistan. Who, had, who is a surgeon, have a very low opportunity. And so WHO brought them to Thailand to train the ATOS and VHTOS. And so we thank you, Singapore team, spread out the knowledge by using the local uh, course. We call the STAR course in Cambodia. I have an opportunity to join in 2015. I also have the, the first opportunity to have this uh, spider, fry spider here. And, and many friends in Taiwan, Macau, Korea, Hong Kong. And also we have a success story because of, among these friends, uh, by uh, Chu ming Duck, by uh, uh, Professor Bijayan and the Professor So, James Kong, and friends from Australia and Malaysia go together to teach the first ATOS course in Myanmar for the emergency medicine doctors. At that time, we have opportunity to visit the, the hospital. This is an example of the friends teaching the course, making knowledge and improve the quality of care. Here is the, the, the hospital in, in Myanmar, the, the first 2012 that we arrived in the emergency room. It's quite very quiet and really dark and not so many uh, will organize the resuscitation area. This is that time. After we teach in 2012, 2014, we have two years after that, we go back again for teach another course for the second group of the emergency physician to get involved with the ATOS course. This is 2014 team. At that time, we have opportunity to look the progress of the caring uh, of trauma in that hospital. They change the, they have the size of emergency room in front. They say we are ready to take care of emergency patients. This is so crowded emergency room and they have the triage system. They have the resuscitation room. They have the resuscitation area and also have the ultrasound, have the x-ray portable, have the infusion pump, defibrillator, monitor, everything. From this picture in 2012, change to be 2014. This one come from the network, from the friends in this, in this region, helped each other to give the knowledge and they can improve their trauma care also. I would like to say thank you for Chris Tarek, who tried many, many times to give the knowledge for us, to give us the opportunity to uh, accept the people from Asian to stay and to get the knowledge in Macu University. I would like to say thank you to friends global, in the global, to help us, help this region, not just Thailand, help this region to improve the quality of care, improve the knowledge. From friends in the local area here, Ted Hervosa, uh, Tio, Chuminta, uh, and so many people also, the um, uh, Kamau also, and, and so many people that I didn't mention, sorry about that. We have so many people in, in our group. The final word is if you, walk, if you want to walk fast, you walk alone. But if you want to walk far, you walk together. Thank you very much. Time flies and memories for VJ also. Thank you.